Hello creative people of the internet, if you have been following my videos you will see that I have been creating or developing our new website and in this video we are just going to continue doing that. Um, if you haven't seen the last video, there we created a CMS collection that I wanted to use or actually CMS collections that I wanted to use um, for our case studies. Make sure to watch that video so you can see um, the way I created the collections and why. And in this video we are just going to be creating the collection pages where all these case studies are going to be displayed and also the individual case study pages so that once someone click on one of the case studies they will be able to see a layout for all the case studies that will look exactly the same and this with Webflow is extremely easy so if you're interested stay tuned. So before we get into the CMS part of things, um, just want to give you a quick run through the website. It's coming along pretty good. Uh, we're starting to add some interactions and most of the main pages are completed. So we can go through the website, see how things are moving around. Um, we added uh, we added some movement through the website just so that things are a bit different from you know the usual just keep scrolling to see more content website side of things. Um, and then creating new pages for different uh, targets of things that we want to do as well. Um, one of the things that we're going to be working on, and it, this, if you're interested in this, make sure to hit the subscribe button because one of the things I want to do is create sort of like a Webflow project cost calculator. And what this will do, or what I wanted to do is that a client or a potential client should be able to come to this page who is interested in building a Webflow website and they should be able to click it and see like, okay, well, I want um, a website that, that has about three very basic pages. Maybe one page that is quite advanced and maybe one page that has a lot of JavaScript and interactions on it. And once they're able to do that and they put all the information up there on the form, they should be able to get a cost. Now I have already sort of created like the value of each of these things. So that way it will be easier, but I will make a video to show you how to do the whole um, JavaScript calculator so you can put everything within Webflow. So I will make a video about that one just showing you how to do everything on Webflow so that you can, if you're interested to have a feature like this on your website, you can go ahead and have it. Um, but enough talk about the website, um, let's jump right into the CMS. So first things first, um, as I said before, make sure to hit to um, check out the last video I made about the CMS so you can understand how I built it and how I was able to you know, nest um, a few CMS collections into one. Um, the next thing I want to go here, once you go to our case study CMS, and I just want to talk to you about something very quick. And um, sometimes what I see with CMS um, entries is that people just put a lot of information there without, um, you know, following sort of like a hierarchy structure of elements. So once you, um, if you think about your CMS, this here should be your H1, so you don't need a H1 anymore. That's about it. Um, so make sure that your CMS name or the item name is quite relevant for SEO and all that. Um, it should also be similar to your slug, but you can change it um, to make it more SEO friendly, of course. And then once you start to use something like rich text, what you want to make sure is that you keep this structure throughout your content. So right now I have paragraph I have the challenge is a h2 but if I were to put another subtitle somewhere within the challenge then it will be a h3 and if I were to put something else on this it will be a h4 now after that if I start something new like this solution that goes back to a h2 and you keep the same process all the way until the solution part of things is completed and you start back with a H2 as for the results and you do the same thing over and over again. What this will make sure that happens on your website is that when Google or anything else, any crawler reads your website, it can follow this instruction quite nicely. And it's also good for the user to see different hierarchy in head and size and whatnot. So now that we have that out of the way, let's head over here. And if you scroll down on the left side, what you will see is your CMS collection pages. And that's what we're going to be working on. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on case studies template, which is the single template for each entry in my case studies or each item in the case studies. So we click it. And as you can see right now, it's empty. There's nothing on it. 
but we do have a couple of symbols that we have already saved as we have them everywhere on the website like our footer our navigation so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop my symbol as the navigation and then um, next to this I want to have a small hero section where I'm going to have the title and I'm going to have the category that this company belongs to so we're going to do that really quick um, I have that already on the about page so I can click here make sure that I have that I have the hero section highlighted I'm just gonna control C or command C on Mac and then we're gonna go here we're gonna go back to our case studies template and we're gonna drop it here so right now you are seeing the same content I had on the about page that's because we have not changed it but let's say now we want the H1 as I told you before to be the same H1 or the title that uh, we have on the case studies so what we're going to do is we're going to click the H1 element and we're going to click element settings once we are open there you will see that now that we have a get text from case studies which is the collection that we're using so we click it and now we have a select field in this select field we want it to be name which is the name that we decided um, that is going to be our H1 then we can close this and right here what I want this to be is a different the different companies category so we can go here and we can click back again the settings get text from case studies and we want company um, types and we're gonna click name because that's the only thing that we want and now you see this one is empty so it's not showing um, right now for this one if I were to choose um, let's go here and choose meta description which is the short description that we want it will also show empty right because we have nothing there but let's see now you want to see like okay well I have one with content can I see that one um, if you come over to the left side you're going to be able to see your different um, case study items so let's go for one that we might have something like this one um, you can see it says it gives you the headline and it also gives you the company type for that one I don't have a um, a short description yet but once I add it it will appear right here so the next thing that we want to do is we want to build the body for the case study so we're gonna go ahead I'm just gonna drop, drop a div container and I'm gonna call that main and main is where I'm going to be putting all my other sections that are not the, not the top of the website like the hero or the navigation or the footer and inside this main um, container what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a section and I'm just going to call it um, section since I have everything all my sections already um, aligned and everything else with them with this CSS class and I'm going to call it case study body and then I'm going to drop in a diff block and this is if you're using um, FN Suite client first um, what I want to do with this div block is I want to create a container so I'm just gonna go here and type in container as a class and with the FN Suite client first you will have three type of containers already built I built an extra one for extra large containers um, but I'm going to be using the medium one and I think this gives me enough content space on both sides and enough space for me to be able to add my content and inside there I just want to create a content wrapper and then uh, what I want to do is that I want to get a grid sometimes you can just skip the content wrapper I just do that one like something that I prefer to do but um, once you use a grid or anything like that you are fine without using the content wrapper sometimes I would use the content wrapper to give it a uh, a combo class so that I can add more like padding or anything like that, that I might need for that specific um, section or that specific container that I'm working on so, but if you don't need to do that that's fine um, the first thing I want to do here is that I want to remove the number of rows I just need one and I want this one to be smaller I want the right row to, um, column to be smaller and I want the left one to be much larger since that's where I'm going to be having content and images and I'm gonna click done and now I'm going to give this one a case study grid
um, class and now I'm going to bring in another div block and I'm gonna drop it here and I'm gonna call it case study content and case study sidebar So that's quite clear, the sidebar goes on the left side, my content goes on the right side. The next thing I want to do is I want to create my gold um, call, um, grid, that would be right at the top. So I'm going to take this grid, I'm going to drop it here. I want that one to have three columns, but only one row. And we're going to call that gold grid. And inside there, what I want to do is I want to give it a border. And then I want to um, grab another div block and I'm gonna call it gold single card. And this is where I'm sort of going to input all my content. So now I want this to be a flex box because I want one thing to be over the other. So the title and then a small paragraph. And we want to give this some space. And so I think I'm gonna give it about 20 pixels um, padding. And I'm gonna drop in my heading. Um, for this one, I'm going to be using H2s. And we're going to say that we want that to be Cool, title one and we're gonna give it a class of h2 and then we're going to with single text we are just going to drop this right underneath and this text is going to be the title one description And this one's a little bit big, so what I want to do is I want to create a combo class of small um, that I already created before, so I know that that would be much smaller. And I just want to give it um, something to divide all the different single cards. So I'm going to put a border to the right. And now I'm just going to copy this and paste it and because it's a grid it will just copy itself from the next columns and we're just going to change this to cool title 2 and we're going to change this to description 2 and we're going to do the same thing with this one cool title 3 now one as we think about it, this doesn't always have to be like gold, it can be just like what we did, like we did two decks, we did a website and whatnot. Um, but the last thing we want to do here is that this gold single card also has a border, but then our grid has a border. So what we want to make sure is that the last one doesn't have one. So I'm gonna call this last grid and I'm going to remove that. Now they don't have one. The next thing that we need here is that we need to create, oh, to bring in the rich tags. And we just need to make sure that we are dropping that in our content. So we just gonna bring it here for now and then move it here. And this one, since we're using the FN Suite um, client first, what we want to do is we want to make sure we have the rich text block highlighted. And here we're gonna write rich text. rich text and it's going to change all the styling to fit the um, one and a half on our style guide right so now um, as you can see here it's just dummy content from webflow so what, what we want to do now is highlight text rich text um, block and then we click the settings and we're gonna get text from case study content so here you have all the content that we put there um, you can for you to be able to edit this, you have to head over to the um, case study so you can edit this content. The only thing though is that right now there's not enough space between these two and if we were to add a combo class to this, um, that will work fine. I don't see that to be a problem. But the other thing that you can do is you can come here and 
drop a div container or a div block and what we want to do is we want to see um, key study wrapper body wrapper and you can just drop that there and then what we are going to do is we're going to give the case study body wrapper we're going to give it um, some pattern now we have the pattern that we need um, I just want a little bit probably more space between my columns so I'm going to give this like a 30 pixels space and the next thing that we're going to add here will be Calendly um, so we're going to create a Calendly wrapper and we're just going to drop in some content so I'm going to drop in a title just need to make sure that that h1 is here and we're going to change this to an h3 I'm going to change the content afterwards but I just wanted to show you how we can do this really easy um, we're gonna add a paragraph and this paragraph needs to have this and then small p which is um, the smaller paragraph that I've created the only thing to keep in mind whenever you are designing websites with a lot of content is that the smaller your fonts are the more space that you need between lines so right now for this one it's a bit tight so we want it to be about two and now you can read a lot better and that's it for that one the next thing I just need to add to this is just the footer so I'm going to come here I'm gonna drop it right here first I'm going to close all this and I'm just gonna put it right here and as you can see we have the content that we needed from the CMS we have a layout that we can use now of course there's some content that I need to change here and add my calendar link to this um, so they can do everything right here without having to leave um, the website in my next video I'm going to create a filter on the work page so that once you go there you should be able to filter dif for different um, company types and also for different work type so if you're interested stay tuned and if you cannot wait for that I created a video I'm going to put the link right here where I did that for our blog post um, for one for our page before and um, you can see the same thing how I did it there it will be the same way that I'm going to do it here so make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell button so whenever I post another video you get a notification and I will see you again in the next videos